Hey, good morning, everyone. So the birds are singing outside, the squirrels are playing in the trees, the fish are swimming down at the river. It is a beautiful day. For those of you who are just joining, what I'm hoping to do is just invite some kids uh, to spend a little time with me just saying the pledge and having a little Bible story as part of their school at home. And so if you've got a, a child, elementary age at home, or a grandchild, then uh, have them gather around, and we're just going to spend a little time uh, together this morning just studying about God's Word, and just also opportunity for them to have a time to say the pledge. So uh, hopefully you'll have an opportunity to get them around a, a computer screen or around your phone, uh, iPad, so that they can be a part of this. If they're not up yet, uh, then maybe have them to watch this later, an opportunity for us just to kind of uh, help them to... Uh, have a, a time of just honoring the Lord as part of their school curriculum. So let's begin just with uh, the pledge. So if you'll uh, say the pledge to the American flag with me today, and hopefully you know that when we say the pledge, we are uh, saying that we are honoring our nation and we are giving our allegiance to our nation to support our leaders. And so I hope that you're praying for them and offering words of encouragement about that. So let's say the pledge to the American flag. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And I know for the kids around here, we always end our pledge with God bless America, and that's our desire today. So let's also uh, say the pledge to the Christian flag, and I know this is probably not one that you're as familiar with because we only uh, really say this around uh, vacation Bible school time. Uh, so how about we do it this way? I'll say a line, and then you can repeat that line after me. Okay, so let's say the pledge to the Christian flag. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. One brotherhood uniting all Christians in service and in love. So in the same way that we honor our country, then we also want to honor God and honor Jesus. I know that there are some versions of that pledge that say one Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again, just to remind us that God is always with us. So then there's also one more pledge, and that's the pledge to the Bible. And so I hope that you'll also say this pledge as we honor God's word today. And again, this one might not be one that you remember, and so I'll say a line and then you say it after me. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path and hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. All right, well, all of you did wonderful. Thank you so much for joining me in those pledges today. And again, for those of you who might be just clicking in to see what's uh, going on, I'm trying to offer just an opportunity for kids, uh, elementary age, to gather together to say the pledge, have a word of prayer together, and then also just to uh, talk about this book. And I, I know this is, looks like a really big book. Actually, it's a 66 books all combined together uh, in, in two sections. Uh, we call that the Old Testament and the New Testament. And here's an easy way to kind of remember that. Uh, the things that would have happened before Jesus was born, well, those stories are in the Old Testament. 
And then the stories that were happened about Jesus or after he was born, those are in the New Testament. So how about we do this? How about we play a game? And I'm going to tell you a story, and you tell me if you think it's in the Old Testament or the New Testament. And so uh, I'll just tell you this story, and then uh, you can shout out old or new if you think it happened before Jesus or when Jesus was alive on the earth or after Jesus. Jesus. I, I can't see if you raise your hand, so you'll have to shout it out really loud. So uh, let's just start with this one. How about Jesus was born in Bethlehem? Is that in the Old Testament or the New Testament? What do you think? How many of you think it was in the Old Testament? What, what about the New Testament? Well, if it's about Jesus and when he was born in Bethlehem, then we know that's in the New Testament. So if you said New Testament, then you've got that right. Okay, let's try another one. How about this one? How about Noah's Ark and the Flood? Would that be in the Old Testament or the New Testament? So shout it out, Old or New? Which one do you think it might be? Noah's Ark and the Flood. Did that happen before Jesus or after Jesus? Well, if you said the Old Testament, then you're right. Congratulations. You're doing wonderful with this game. All right, let's try one more. How about this? Jesus feeds 5,000 people with just five loaves of bread and two fish. So would that story be in the Old Testament or in the New Testament? What do you think? Jesus feeds 5,000 people with five loaves of bread and two fish. In fact, one of the disciples said that they were small loaves of bread and just some tiny little fish in Jesus multiplied it into 5,000 meals for all of those people. Pretty amazing. Is that in the Old Testament or the New Testament? Well, if you said New Testament, then that's right. Uh, the gospel writers tell us about Jesus feeding the 5,000 people with just that little boy's lunch. Isn't that amazing that Jesus would do that great miracle? Let, let's try this one. How about Daniel and the lion's den? Remember Daniel was told not to pray to God and he still wanted to honor God and so he prayed anyway and they threw him in this den of lions but God protected him. Would that be in the Old Testament or the New Testament? What do you think? Shout it out. Old or new? Well, if you said the Old Testament, you're right. The book of Daniel is in the Old Testament. All right, I've got one more for you. Peter walks on the water. Is that in the Old Testament or the New Testament? Peter walking on the water. Now, I know you're thinking, wait a minute, I thought Jesus walked on the water. Well, he did, but he invited one of his disciples to come out of the boat on the water with him, and Peter also walked on the water. Now, if you were listening, you heard me say that Jesus did this, so we know that those stories are in what? The Old Testament or the New Testament? Yeah, they're in the New Testament, so that story is in the New Testament. All of you did great. So here's something I want to do. I'm going to share with you uh, just a little story from one of these books. And by the way, the first five books of the Bible, uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, those books are sometimes called the Pentateuch. And I know that's a big word. It's a Greek word, but it just means five books. The Hebrew word for it is Torah, and that means the law. And these books tell us about how we're supposed to live and how we're supposed to honor God. And there's all of these, the Ten Commandments are there and all these different rules like don't tell lies and honor your mother and your father. Uh, don't take things that don't belong to you. Be kind to people. All of those things you'll find in those first five books of the Old Testament. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Now, I have an easy way that I like to remember what each of these books are about. So the book of Genesis, this word right here, it means beginnings. And so the book of Genesis is a, is a book of beginnings. It tells us about the beginning of the world and the beginning of all the plants and animals. It tells us about the beginning of man. It tells us about all of these things that happened in the beginning. In fact, the very first words in the Bible are in the beginning. 
Well, that's a really good way to start a book, isn't it? With the beginning. So that's what this book is about. Then the next book is Exodus, and it's about the exit. This is when the Israelites left Egypt and went to the promised land. So the book of Exodus, it's about the exit. All right, so what was Genesis about? It's a book of beginnings. And Exodus, it's about the exit. All right, let's go to the next one. Genesis, Exodus. Do you know what the next one is? Yeah, it's Leviticus. And Leviticus is uh, about the Levites. The Levites were the people who took care of the temple. And it also is about how to live right. So the book of Leviticus is about the Levites and how to live right. It gives us some of those rules to follow in order to honor God. All right, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. What's the next one? Does anybody remember? Yeah, it's Numbers. And this one's really easy because the book of Numbers, well, it's about numbers. It's about how many people there were and where they lived. Kind of like the census that we're doing right now in the United States. We're counting all the people that live here and where they live. Well, that's what the book of Numbers talks about. All right, one more, and this is this really big word, and it's Deuteronomy. And I like to think that this book tells us about your duty. Now, not your dog's duty. No, this is D-U-T-Y, your duty, or how you should do things right. So this is what this book is about, your duty or what you should do. So those are those first five books, just an easy way to remember that. But I just thought today I might share a story with you uh, from that first book, the book of Genesis. And so I'm going to just open up my Bible, and I want us just to look at the day that God created the animals. And this is in the fifth day and the sixth day of creation. Here's what it says. Let the water teem with living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea, and every living and moving thing with which the water teems according to their kind, and every winged bird according to its kind, and God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and increase in number, and fill the water in the seas, and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the land produce living creatures according to their kind, livestock, creatures that move along the ground, and wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kind, the livestock according to their kind, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kind, and God saw that it was good. I, I hope you heard as I was reading this, they kept talking about each animal was created according to its kind. Now, if you talk to your science teacher, then they would tell you that all animals are classified according to their kind. So uh, we need to understand then that God says that he made each animal according to its kind. Uh, a worm doesn't become a monkey, and a monkey doesn't become a boy or become a girl. All of these things are fixed within their kind. But here's something really cool that the Bible tells us, and that's the fact that God said that Adam got to name all of the animals. Huh. How many of you have a pet at home? Maybe you have a dog or a cat or a little gerbil or uh, maybe a bunny rabbit or some kind of animal. Anybody have a pet at home? What, what's the name of your pet? Yeah, well, we, we've had uh, several different little dogs as our pets. And one time, my daughter, Allison, she decided to name one of our dogs Kitty. And so I would go outside and I would say, here, Kitty, Kitty. And instead of a cat coming up, there would be this little dog that would run up. It was kind of funny. So maybe you would find this really interesting. Nowhere in the Bible is there any animal that has a pet name. Nowhere at all. 
It always just talks about monkeys or uh, bears or lions, but it never gives them a name. I, I thought that was really kind of interesting, but God said that Adam could name all of the animals. And so God brought the animals to him, and Adam got to decide what to call them. I, I'm thinking if I had seen a giraffe, I might have called it a long necked horse instead of a giraffe. Or uh, if I'd seen an alligator, I might have uh, called it a see you later gator, because I don't know if I'd want to stick around to see if an alligator liked its name or not. So all these things Adam decided to name. But here's the really neat part. Even though the Bible doesn't give any animal a name, a pet name, the Bible actually says that God knows your name. He says that he loves you, that he knows you personally, and that he's going to watch out for you. And so I just want to pray for you today and just know that God knows your name. Dear Jesus, I pray you be with each of these boys and girls as they're uh, trying to do their schoolwork from home. Lord, I pray you protect them and their families. I pray that you just give them a fun day and a blessed day and that you would watch over them in a mighty way. Thank you for knowing our name. We love you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Go give your pet a hug for me.